Greetings. I'm Gerald Casali, KSU alumnus 1970. I'm most known as the founder of the Artwave 1980s band Devo, where I was a principal songwriter, stage show designer, and video director. As a former member of Students for a Democratic Society and a survivor of the attack on students by the National Guard on May 4, 1970, I was very much looking forward to participating in the 50th anniversary events commemorating the students who were killed and wounded. After 50 years, it seemed that finally there could be some critical mass recognition and a national stage acknowledging the grave injustice that was perpetrated on us that day. Clearly, those students who lost their lives exercising their constitutional First Amendment rights deserve some justice that they have been thus far denied. They are victims of illegitimate authority who should not have died in vain. But just as our lives were turned upside down that day in 1970, and the course of history altered in a flash, so it is now with COVID-19 that these momentous plans were thwarted. So here we are, reduced to video messaging as we remain separated under social distancing directives. This turn of events is beyond frustrating. And for me, it dredges up vividly painful memories of May 4th tragedy itself. I was in the middle of the protest that began at noon on May 4th. We had played into a trap hatched by Governor Rhodes and the university administration. They had decided to declare martial law on campus just prior to the protest. In case you don't know, martial law is a go-to weapon that suspends First Amendment rights to assembly and free speech and more. As a member of the KSU Honors College Scholarship Program, I had become friends with two of the murdered students. Honors freshman Jeffrey Miller and Alison Krauss. <clears throat> Martial law allowed the National Guard to order us to disperse and then to tear gas us and shoot and kill some of us when we didn't willingly obey their orders. Afterwards, the class action suits brought by the parents of the killed and wounded students went nowhere because martial law had been declared and were therefore, by definition, we were fair game. We were there that day to sound the alarm that the Constitution and democratic rule of law were being usurped by an authoritarian president, President Nixon, who had demonstrated repeatedly that he thought he was beyond the law. Now he had expanded the heinous Vietnam War into Cambodia without an act of Congress. He was thumbing his nose at the checks and balances of the three co-equal branches of government. If this sounds familiar, it should. I thought that living through the horror that day and the three years that followed climaxing in Nixon's well-deserved impeachment would be the worst of America I would ever experience. Now, self-quarantined, reading and watching the news as this country careens towards a dictatorship that will exacerbate the pain and suffering of most of its citizenry to the enrichment of the one percenters and enemies of liberty, I realized I was wrong. Fifty years later, nothing has changed. The problem remains the same. In fact, it has only grown worse. Those in government who pose a threat to democracy from within never rest. They have more power than ever. Being on the wrong side of history seems to energize them. Only righteous indignation and bold action can check their vile trampling of our human rights. I ask everyone to rise up and do whatever they can by any means necessary to stop this diabolical march to right-wing madness. Please do it for Jeffrey and Allison and all the students who sacrificed themselves that day in 1970, speaking truth to power. As Devo warned in 1980 in our song, Freedom of Choice, freedom of choice is what you got. Freedom from choice is what you want. Please go out there and prove us wrong before it's too late.